Hey, how's it going, and welcome back to another Hardcore Iron Man Progress video. And we finished off the last episode using up all of our bones at the Ecto Funtis, trying to get the highest prayer level possible with what we had. We were level 99 combat, and I really wanted to get 100 combat so we could use the veteran boat at pest control, but unfortunately we would have needed like 4 more prayer levels, but it's not too big of a deal, we should finish getting 100 combat in the middle of grinding out void. To get full void, we're gonna need 1250 points, and we get 4 points each time we finish a game on the intermediate boat. So I think it's going to take like 10 to 12 hours of straight up doing pest control, so we need to get strapped in for a good long time for this. Okay, here's what we got exactly from the first hour of pest control. We got just under 16k GP, we got 64 points, which means we did 16 games in the hour, which is an average of 3 minutes and 45 seconds per game, and we also got about 26k attack XP. And I mean, considering we're just here to get void, the XP from just playing the minigame isn't terrible either. Although, the GP that you get from this, that, <laughs> that's a whole nother story. Well then, what is going on here? That was very strange. Oh my god, guys, it's the ultimate clickbait. Today, I died on the Hardcore Iron Man. By the way. No, it's actually a safe death though, so if you die, you don't lose your items, you don't lose your status, we're all good. So here is level 78 attack coming in, and we need one more level. It could be attack, defend, strength, just one more level, and then we'll be 100 combat and we'll be able to use the veteran boat. And here we go, I must be a psychic because I predicted the future. Here is level 76 defense coming in, which means we are now 100 combat, which also means we can now use the veteran boat. So instead of getting four points per game, we're gonna start getting five points per game. So that's like, what, 25% faster? And a quick little update before we start using the veteran boat, we've got 784 points and we've also made 194k GP in straight up cash. And now that we don't need to get any more combat levels, I'm taking out the range setup just so we can get some range XP. And also pest control is a lot more chill when using range, so this should be fun. To buy the set plus the first helm, we needed 850 points and of course I kept forgetting to leave for like three games in a row because it's like a force of habit to just go back in after every game. But we've got more than enough points now to buy the set plus the ranger helm. And in case you missed the last episode, the main goal right now is to get set up for Barrows. And I know Void isn't necessarily the best option, especially at lower levels, but this is something that I've been meaning to get done anyways. And I could always use it at Nightmare Zone, or the Fight Caves, or any non-Slayer PVM I do, really. And we are now ruining the 69 range pier. I guess it's happy and sad at the same time, but we got 70 range. If you've ever done pest control before, then you know that people like to announce whenever it's their last game. So I just want to let you all know this was my last game. We've now got the 400 points that we need to buy the last two helms, the melee helm and the mage helm. I'm actually kind of surprised that I didn't accidentally play like 5 extra games at Pest Control. But Void is finally knocked out of the way, so the next thing that we're going to need for Beerows is a Rune Crossbow, because the Bone Crossbow is not going to cut it against Aram. We have level 65 Fletching, and we have to get to 69 in order to make a Rune Crossbow. And a few videos ago, we already got the Runite Limbs. <gasps> we got them! <gasps> yes! Let's go, Runite Limbs. So thankfully the toughest part of the rune crossbow grind is already over. Now that they added those new shields into the game, you could be really lazy like me and cut a full inventory of logs, fletch them into shields, and then still have half an inventory left to cut more logs. And that's because the shields take two logs instead of one, although it is half the speed. And the shields and the unstrung longbows out for the same price, so it's probably not worth it, but you do still get the same XP as if you were making two bows. But yeah, I was just kind of feeling lazy on here, and I was actually doing pest control on my main while I was AFKing here, because doing pest control on this account really inspired me to finish up the grind on my main. And here is 75 woodcutting, which means we can now cut magic trees. So now we can get those 12 magic logs that we need for desert treasure. Oh, uh, that's kind of awkward. Never mind. But we've got the tedious grind out of the way, so we're just going to rush through these levels very quickly to get to the good part right here where we got 69 fletching. We can now make runite crossbows. So let's head over to the bank and grab out what we need, or at least what we have so far. We got our runite limbs, our U logs, and our knife. So we're going to fletch the logs into the crossbow stock, and we're going to attach the limbs and the crossbow stock together. Uh, apparently we need a hammer. Give me one second. I've never had to make a crossbow from scratch before, so this is like all really new to me. So we've got the unstrung crossbow now and all we still have left to add to it is the crossbow string. To get a crossbow string I had to look this up. Apparently you need to get a tree root and spin it on the spinning wheel. Thankfully I had this oak tree growing from like forever ago so I just dug it up and we got four roots from it. And I just home teleported so we are back in Lumbridge at the spinning wheel. We are going to spin our crossbow string and now let's add it to the unstrung runite crossbow and we have finally got our runite crossbow. Let's check out those stats. Ah. Oh. Amazing. 
Oh, it's so nice to finally have that down. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. And obviously we can't use bone bolts with the rune crossbow, so we're gonna unlock the ability to fletch broad bolts. We have over 600 slayer points. For some reason, I thought broad bolts would be way more, but it's only 300 points. So we don't even have to do any slayer tasks. We can just unlock it right away, just like that. And now let's actually buy the bolts. So let's open up the slayer shop and it comes out to a cost of 55 GP per bolt, which really isn't all that bad. So we're gonna buy a few thousand of them. All right, we bought just over 3000 bolts because that's how much GP I felt like spending. And hopefully that should last us a good long while. And it's not just for barrows, but for training slayer too. Um, I don't think we'll even have to use that many for barrows because the only brother we're going to be ranging is Aram. But it's just going to be nice to be stocked up on broad bolts. A very, very long time ago when this account was new, I started in search of the Myrk, but I never really finished it or even like did any parts of the quest. I just started it. So today we are going to finish it. All right, we just defeated the boss, which was some spooky skeleton dog, and it dropped some rubies and a lot of big bones. And now we're going to head back to Canifus, and there is the quest complete. And the XP doesn't really matter. The main reason for doing this was to unlock the quick shortcut behind the bar in Canifus, which takes you pretty close to the Swamp Bodhi that goes right to Barrows. The next thing we're going to do is the Shades of Mortone quest, because by doing this quest, we unlock the Shades of Mortone minigame teleport, which we can use every 20 minutes, which is even faster than using the Canifus shortcut and taking the Bodhi from there. So in all of my years playing RuneScape, I've never understood this minigame. I've never learned how to play it, and I don't think I ever will. I mean, I don't know. I've heard it can be decent money, but I don't know if I could really ever be bothered. Although it is kind of like AFK free crafting XP. But whatever, I just wanted to finish the quest and move on. And apparently we get 2k herbal XP from this quest. This is why it's so important to do as many quests as possible early on. If I did this quest much sooner, then that 2k herbal XP would have meant so much more to me. But because I'm doing it so late, it really doesn't do much for my account at this point. That's like maybe 5 or 10% of the way to the next herbler level. Also, I haven't actually done Barrows in years, and even then I never really had much experience. So I did a practice run on my main with a scuff setup, and you can even see my chest count is 17. But it was nice to have that little refresher so I could remember how it goes, and so I don't somehow mess up and die right away on the hardcore. Now, one of the last things that we need to do is build a Kirill teleport portal in the house, which is going to let us get back to Canifus super fast. We could always use the scrub version of this and use the Arty Cloak to get to the Arty Monastery Altar to restore prayer, and then run to the Fairy Ring from there to get to the Canifus Fairy Ring, and then run from that Fairy Ring to the bank, but we are above that, and we actually trained up construction a bit. It's also good that we knocked out Desert Treasure as well in the last video, because you need to have the quest done in order to actually make the portal go to any of the Ancient Magic's teleport locations. And in order to direct the portal somewhere, you'll need to have the spell unlocked, but you don't have to actually be on the spellbook. But you also need to have 100 cast worth of that spell in order to make it, so it's going to be kind of rough having to use 200 law runes and 100 blood runes, but it's definitely going to be 100% worth it. The way I see it is it's kind of like an investment. Once you use it over 100 times, then you're already coming out ahead. The next thing we need to do also involves construction, which is building an altar. Well, we have to build the room first. I don't know if you guys noticed, but that portal room cost 100k GP to build, and now this chapel is also going to cost another 50k, so we are spending some serious money here. But again, it's going to be completely worth it because we're going to have this room in the house forever. And with our 57 construction, we are going to build a cloth covered altar. We could easily just boost up to the next one, but I really don't care until I'm actually ready to train prayer. But for now, I just want it to look pretty. And I mean, you've got to admit, this is a pretty handsome looking altar. And now I'm just going to mess around with the layout of the house and set it up more efficiently so I can teleport home, run to the altar to restore my prayer, then run straight to the portal and teleport right back to Canifus for the next Barrows run. It'll be more clear in the next video where I actually do Barrows, where you can see how everything I'm doing is going to actually flow together more smoothly. But yeah, dude, I'm just really happy this is all set up and finally ready to go. But now for real, the very, very last thing that we need to do I promise before getting into burrows is get high healing food. We have swordfish and lobsters, or we could cook some of the sharks that we have and burn a bunch of them. But what I want to do for food is get potatoes with cheese, and we can buy these at the Warriors Guild for like 9 GP each. And I did this in a previous video as well, but we ran out of them pretty fast. And I know for a fact that we're going to end up going through a lot of these. It's kind of annoying hopping around so much because Iron Man like to buy them out apparently, which makes sense because they cost next to nothing and heal 16 hit points each, so it's basically like free monkfish. And I got logged out so many times from too much world hopping just trying to buy like, I bought like a couple hundred of these, but that should make a set for now. In the next Hardcore Iron Man Progress video, we are going to be doing 50 Barrows chests, and we'll see how lucky we can get and hopefully not die. 
and the drop rate of getting any Barrow's piece is 1 in 16, so if we lived in a perfect world, we'll be getting 3 Barrow's pieces. But I suppose to be fair, it is actually 50-50 every chest. I would love to get Carol's top and bottom because we really need some upgrades for the range armor because the blue dragon hide legs and green dragon hide body is starting to get kind of old now. But that is pretty much going to wrap it up for today's video. Um, if you want, I want to see what predictions you have for what pieces you think I'm going to get, if any, and if you think I'm going to die doing this. Or actually, just let me know how you think I would die on this account. Well, just like how you think I would die on this account in general, whether it's from Barrows or DCing during Slayer or getting two hit by Fire Strike in the Wilderness. I'm curious to know how you all think I'm going to die on this account. But otherwise, I want to thank you so much for watching. I do hope that you're enjoying the series because I'm having so much fun making it. And again, I do hope you enjoyed today's video. And I want to thank you so much for watching. And I will see you again tomorrow.